Hey students, this video is going to go over solution stoichiometry. So when we're doing solution stoichiometry, hang on a second. There we go. Um, I want you to remember when you're doing stoichiometry, it's talking about a reaction taking place. Now we haven't had to do any kind of stoichiometry up until this point when we were doing molarity equations or dilution equations because we didn't have a reaction. We are just talking about dissolving something in something else. But if we're talking about something that's precipitating or neutral, neutralizing or reacting, that's telling us that we have to write a reaction. And at some point we have to do some stoichiometry. So when you have to do solution stoichiometry, you always start by writing a balanced chemical reaction, including your states of matter. Balance that thing. It's a good idea to write your quantities of your knowns and what you're looking for underneath your reaction, just as a visual to keep you kind of like your eye on the prize and what you have to do. And then you have to figure out, well, what do you need to do first? Are you going to do some stoichiometry? Are you going to do some molarity equations? What order um, are you going to perform your operations based on the information that you have been given? Okay, so let's take a look at, at these problems. So it says, how many grams of silver chromate will precipitate when 150 milliliters of 0.5 molar silver nitrate are added to potassium chromate? So are we going to start with our balanced reaction? So we have silver nitrate. And these are solutions reacting with potassium chromate. We have to do a double replacement product prediction. So we're going to have KNO3, and that is going to be aqueous and silver chromate, AG2CrO4. And that is our solid. So we have to balance this. So this is going to be a two here, and we have a two here. So it's a good idea to write the information below your reaction to keep track of everything. So I have 150 milliliters of this 0 0.5 molar solution. That's a five. And I'm trying to figure out my grams of silver chromate. Okay. So what can I do with this information? Well, I have enough right here in order to use my molarity formula. Molarity is equal to moles over liters. I have my molarity and I have my milliliters. I can find my moles from here. So I have 0 0.500 molar. I'm going to look for my moles on the top because that's my unknown. And remember, I have to convert my milliliters to liters by moving my decimal point three times to the left. So that's going to be 0 0.1500. So I'm going to multiply those two numbers to get my x by itself. So I have 0. Point, I'm going to write this up here, 0. 0.0750 moles of silver nitrate. So now let's look at what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to find grams of silver chromate. So once I get into moles here, I can just go ahead and do stoichiometry to find my grams of silver chromate. So I'm going to use my mole ratio, two moles of silver nitrate and two moles, sorry, not two moles. Let me get my, it's just one mole of silver chromate up here. And then I'm going to use the molar mass of silver chromate so that I can get my grams of my precipitate. So I have to find my molar mass. What is chromium's molar mass? 52. Glad I looked because I was going to use 54. Plus my oxygen says so 331. 0.74 grams of silver chromate. Oops. And then I can solve. So I have 0 0.075 divided by 2 times 331.74. I'm going to have three sig figs. So I would have 12.4 grams of silver chromate 
as my answer. That's it. Let's take a look at the next example. So it says, how many milliliters of 0 0.280 molar barium nitrate are required to precipitate as barium sulfate when the barium nitrate is reacted with 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.350 molar aluminum sulfate? So we have stoichiometry because we're reacting something with something else. So we have barium nitrate solution reacting with aluminum sulfate solution. And we are making aluminum nitrate, which is aqueous, and barium, sulf oops, barium sulfate, which is solid. So we have to balance. So this is gonna be a two and a three in a three. Now let's write what we're trying to find and what we have down here underneath our reaction. So it tells us that we have 25.0 milliliters of this and we have 0 0.350 molar solution. And we're trying to find our milliliters of this and we have a 0 0.280 molar solution. So what do we have enough of to do something with? Well, we don't know enough about the barium nitrate yet. We only have one piece of information about that, but we do have enough information about our aluminum sulfate to do something with. We have the molarity and we have the volume. So that means we can use our molarity equation, moles over liters, to find out our moles of aluminum sulfate. So we have 0 0.350 molar solution, and I have my X, my moles on the top, and I've got to move my decimal point three times to the left here. So 0 0.0250 liters solution. So 0 0.350 times 0 0.0250 to get my X by itself. So that means I have 0 0.00875 moles of aluminum sulfate. And I'm trying to get some information about my barium nitrate. So I need to do some stoichiometry to get my barium nitrate. So question is, how far am I going to take this stoichiometry? Well, I've got some pieces of information. I have my molarity and I'm trying to find my milliliters. So I just need to stop at the moles. Once I get moles, I have enough information to solve for the milliliters. It doesn't say anything about the mass of this. So I stop right here. So that means I have 0 0.0263 moles of barium nitrate. So then my next step is going to be to use the molarity equation again, which is again, moles over liters. And this time I'm gonna be solving for the liters. So I have 0 0.280. I've got my moles up here that I just solved for 0 0.0263 of barium nitrate. I'm going to be solving for this over here. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. You guys tend to mess up on your uh, calculations. In order to get X by itself, if I multiply both sides by X, I get 0.280X is equal to 0 0.0263. So to get X by itself, I need to divide both sides by 0. 280. So you're going to be taking your moles and dividing it by your molarity. So divided by 0 0.280. So my X is going to be 0 0.0938 liters. It's asking for milliliters. So I have to move my decimal point three times to the right. So I got 93.8 milliliters 
as the answer. Okay. Let's do one more. Looking here, we have oops, yeah, 25. 0.0 milliliters of 0.35 molar sodium hydroxide are added to 45.0 milliliters of 0.125 molar copper sulfate. How many grams of copper to hydroxide will precipitate? So we have a reaction happening. So we have to write a balanced reaction. So NaOH aqueous plus copper sulfate, which is aqueous. And we're going to be making sodium sulfate, which is aqueous, and copper hydroxide, which is our solid. And we have to balance our reactions. We have a two here, and that should be balanced. So let's write the information that we have. We have 25.0 milliliters of this in 0.35 molar solution. It says that we have 45.0 milliliters of a 0.125 molar solution. And we're trying to find grams of precipitate that are formed. So which one of these reactants are we gonna use? So I want you to remember from the stoichiometry unit, if you're given the starting amount of both reactants, you have to do a limiting reactant problem. So we have to do both of these stoichiometries to find the grams of copper hydroxide to see which one produces the least amount. So we're gonna start with our sodium hydroxide. So we have enough information to use our molarity equation. So molarity is equal to our moles over our liters. Move that three times to the left. So 0 0.2, oops. 0.0250 liters. So that means we have 0 0.00875 moles of sodium hydroxide. And we're ultimately trying to figure out how many grams of copper hydroxide. So we're going to use our mole ratio to switch from the sodium hydroxide to the copper hydroxide. And then we have one more step to switch from the moles of copper hydroxide to the grams of copper hydroxide. So let me find this molar mass here really quick. 97.52. So let's go ahead and solve divided by two times 97.52. So that is 0 0.427, 0 0.427 grams of copper hydroxide. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're going to use the copper sulfate. So we have 0 0.125 molar solution of this, we have X over, move our decimal point three times to the right. So 0 0.0450 liters. So we have 0 0.00563 moles of copper sulfate. We're going to use that mole ratio to switch from moles of copper sulfate into moles of copper hydroxide. And then we're going to use the molar mass to find how many grams of copper hydroxide the copper sulfate would have made. So same molar mass, I don't have to recalculate it. So let's go ahead and solve times 97.2. And we get 
grams of copper hydroxide. So remember, when you have a limiting reactant problem, whichever one produces the least amount of product is your limiting, and that's how much product we're going to make. So because 0.427 is less than 0.549, the sodium hydroxide was our limiting reactant, and we're going to make 0.427 grams of copper hydroxide. So that's it. That's how you do some solution stoichiometry. So go ahead and try it out in your packet on pages six and seven. Um, check your answers against the key and let us know if you guys have any questions. Okay, good luck.